Okay everyone, today I'm going to be seeing if I can make x-rays from scotch tape. So a really interesting thing happens with scotch tape when you unravel it quickly. It undergoes a phenomenon called triboluminescence. So triboluminescence is actually not understood very well, but we do know that what happens is light is generated through the breaking of chemical bonds at the surface. And you can get this to happen in scotch tape and even in sugar crystals. So watch what happens when I unravel this scotch tape in the dark. So I'm going to unravel this tape in the dark and you should be able to see some bright light coming from the center right where it's unraveling. So I'll turn on my drill in the dark and let's see if we can see it. So it's hard to catch on camera, you can see it really well with your eye. But here's a long shutter speed shot of it so you can see what it actually looks like in real life. So you can do this with tape and then you can also do this with sugar crystals. What works really well is wintergreen. So you need sugar crystals with the mint flavor in it, with mint oils, and then you can get triboluminescence to occur. So you can see when you crush it with a cup, you can see the sparks forming. Okay, ready? Okay, we're gonna look straight down here. Let's see some sparks. See the blue on the edge of the cup? So because triboluminescence creates free electrons, scientists have actually been researching whether or not they could make x-rays by unraveling tape. But the key is you can't do it in regular air, you have to do it in a vacuum. So I'm gonna try doing it in a vacuum, unraveling the tape in a vacuum, and see if I can get x-rays to occur. So I'm gonna be using my Geiger counter that can detect x-rays. So this can detect alpha radiation, beta radiation, gamma rays, and even x-rays. So every time you hear a click, that's a particle hitting the detector in there and creating that clicking noise. So the, and the count on here is called clicks per minute. So right now it's at around 17 clicks per minute. So this is just background radiation. So of all these clicks that you hear, about half of it is coming from the air. It's coming from the radon in the air. So radon is a gas that's unstable and it breaks down into smaller elements and in that breakdown, it emits radiation that can be picked up by the Geiger counter. So that's why you don't want radon gas in your house. So about half of these clicks are coming from the decay of radon in the air. And the other half is coming from the buildings, and it's even coming from my body due to potassium in my body. So the goal is to see if I can get these clicks per minute to go up just by exposing it to x-rays from the tape here. Okay, we're at around 26, 27 counts per minute on our Geiger detector. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this under vacuum, turn on my drill so that I'm pulling the tape as fast as I can, and see if I can get the counts per minute to go up at all. If it does, that means I am creating x-rays. So it looks like it's going up and down between 23 and 27 counts per minute. Let's see if we see an increase in ticks. Three, two, one. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> Did you see an increase? <laughs> so I didn't really see an increase at all, but nothing really different than the baseline. Okay, so I'm guessing that the reason it didn't work is because I'm not getting low enough vacuum in my vacuum chamber. So with my vacuum pump, I can get to around 0.1 millimeters mercury. But according to the researchers that have been using this method to create x-rays, they need about 0.001 millimeters mercury. So I'm a few orders of magnitude off in my pressure. But why would that make such a big difference? So the reason you need a very high vacuum to produce the x-rays is because normally what happens when you unravel the tape, it separates the two pieces and it creates a charge on either side. See how there's a charge on it? It's attracted to my arm. And if you do it fast enough, it creates enough charge that the electrons can jump from one side of the tape to the other side of the tape. 
And in normal air, the electrons don't gain that much momentum. They just bump into the air molecules and get slowed down. But if you have a really good vacuum, what happens is the electrons have enough time to gain enough speed from one side to the other so that when they hit the other side, they can generate x-rays. So x-rays can get generated when a very fast moving electron comes near a nucleus or when an electron hits an inner shell electron and then an outer shell electron falls to the inner shell and then an x-ray is emitted. But the key to all of this is giving the electron enough time without hitting anything to gain enough speed so that it has enough energy to create x-rays. So even though the vacuum is a pretty good vacuum getting down to 10 millimeters mercury, there's still enough air molecules in between there that the electrons get hit by an air molecule before they reach the other side and so they don't gain enough momentum to strike an atom to create x-rays. So I think I'll have to think of a follow-up on this one and get a very high-powered vacuum to try to get the, to the vacuum I need in order to create x-rays. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're not subscribed yet, remember to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out, and if you have any questions about this video or any questions from a previous video, let me know in the comments section and I'll try to get to them. Or if you have any suggestions that you'd like to see me do, let me know also and I'll see you next time.